There are a ton of people pitching their real estate investing software to you, whether it's for skip tracing, text blasting, or lead generation like driving for dollars. There are a lot of options out there. Today, I'm gonna break down the one piece of software that I use, the four ways that I use it, and of course, help you decide if it might be the right investment for your business as well. What's up guys and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Lily, and this channel is where I document my real estate investing journey and bring you guys with me. My very first real estate purchase was to house hack this duplex where I figured out how to put $0 towards my down payment. After that, I showed you guys how I got my first wholesale deal in this eight episode series. And now I'm working on building out business systems that will allow me to do multiple deals per month. And PropStream is a big part of that. So today we're gonna dive into exactly what PropStream is, how it compares to some of your other software options out there. And of course, the four ways that I use PropStream that really make it a no brainer investment for my business. Of course, if you decide you wanna try out PropStream, I have a link to a seven day free trial in my description. And if it's right for you, your purchase will help support this channel so it can be a win-win either way. But before we dive in, don't forget to turn that like button blue and subscribe because as the channel grows, my goal is still to give as much high value, authentic content as I can. And you turning that like button blue helps tell the YouTube algorithm that this is a great video and helps me achieve that goal, so thank you. So first things first, what is PropStream? On their website, they describe themselves as a smart real estate software for investors, realtors, and brokers. Today, we're gonna look at how you can use this as an investor, but I think the main thing is that it really does have so much information and data that it doesn't matter what type of real estate information you need. PropStream so far has been able to meet all of my needs, and I can imagine that realtors and brokers feel the same way. And one of the reasons that I really like PropStream in comparison to some of the other services out there is that it really does have all of the features you need in one place for one price. For example, if you're out driving for dollars, you might pay for one app that lets you log properties while you're out driving, another one that lets you skip trace owner contact info, and then maybe you also pay for a CRM that helps you keep all your properties organized. Paying for all of these different services can get expensive and it can get kind of confusing to look at when you're looking at the data in multiple different places. If you want me to do a more in-depth comparison between PropStream and services like Flipster or Batch Skip Trace or REI Skip or whatever, Whatever other services you guys are interested in, be sure to comment below and let me know what your suggestions for those comparisons are. And if you're looking for a more in-depth tutorial on actually how to use PropStream, like what buttons to press to skip trace or to send postcards or to set up your own website, definitely check out this video right here as it has over 45 minutes of in-depth instruction from one of the product specialists over at PropStream. I'll also link to it in the description for you to watch after this one. For the rest of this video though, I wanna share the four key ways that I use PropStream in my business right now and that I plan to really ramp up and use it as my business kind of grows and we move into the next year. I'm gonna explain why I find each one so valuable as well as record my screen and show you guys exactly how to find this information for whatever market you're investing in. So the first way that I use PropStream is to dive deep and really investigate more information on my free leads. If you've seen this video, I showed you guys an excerpt from my five day beginners bootcamp where I talk about how I build relationships with real estate agents and target on market properties to get free leads in my business. I'll link to that video down below and if you're interested in attending one of those five day beginner boot camps yourself, I'll also put the link so you can check out all of the information and see if there are spots still available in the next session. So if we come to the main page of PropStream, I can type in really any random address. We'll just see one that I have in here. And the first thing I like to do is go to details. Now, if I stay on this property details page to start off with, I can see the ownership information. I can see property characteristics like the number of bedrooms, bathrooms, um, if there's a fireplace, what air conditioning there is, and just other good information, the size of the property. And if I scroll down even more, I can see information about the last sale, what it sold for, um, who purchased it, what the date was, et cetera, et cetera. Another thing that's good is that if there's an HOA, you can see what the HOA fee is here. It's only $7, so that's not much at all. So if you've ever run into the problem of Zillow or Redfin not actually having pictures of the property that you wanna look at, one of the best things I've found is that for some reason, PropStream seems to hold on to more data than some of those other providers. So always check PropStream if you can't find pictures on one of those public sites. 
Um, another great thing is that PropStream kind of shows you all the information that you need to know here at a glance, bedroom, bathroom, square foot, year built, as well as if for some reason they've targeted this property as in distress, like if it was in pre foreclosure, if it's a short sale, um, if it's owned by an individual or like a corporation, like an LLC, um, if the owner is actually living there or if it's not owner occupied and they're using it as a rental, as well as how long they've owned it and if they used bank financing to get it. So some really good information there. I don't use these basic numbers for my comps just yet, but you can check out this video right here to see how I run comps with PropStream, but that is another way that you can use PropStream. Now, if we hit the second tab of MLS details, I can see that this property is actually pending on the MLS. If it was active or if it was expired, which we'll talk about more in a moment, you could see that there, the price, the description, and also scroll down to find all of the agent information, as well as the listing history, if they ever had any price changes, um, increases or decreases, if it went off the market, like we can see right here in 2016, or in 2017, this property failed off the market, then in 2018, it expired off the market, and then it came back in 2020, had a couple of price reductions, and now it's pending. So really good information for you. Um, if this was an active property that I was looking at, this would be super good information to know this you know, withdrawn, failed off the MLS, does show some extra motivation. So you can get that from PropStream just at a glance. You can also use this tab to search for comps. Again, if you want a complete tutorial of exactly how to do this, check out this video right here. But you can set all of your filters, look through all of your properties, their pictures, their sale information, size, um, year built, price per square foot, et cetera, et cetera. All the information you need to figure out what your comps are is right here. And then what I also like is that if you save your comps and then hit actions, you can produce a comp report that will just put everything in kind of a nice looking PDF document. You can use that for yourself or you can send that to your cash buyers once you get a property under contract. So comps, really great tool for PropStream. And then I kind of skip over tax information. If there are any um, tax liens, it's good to know. But what I really like to use is mortgage and transaction history. And this gets me to the second way that I use PropStream, and that's to figure out if I need to be thinking about a creative financing opportunity. So I get a lot of questions about whether or not you can wholesale a property with a mortgage. To answer this question, it's really no different than if we were just trying to outright purchase a property with a mortgage. Let's imagine that we wanna buy a property for $70,000 and we see on PropStream that the mortgage is $50,000. Well, no problem. If the seller agrees to our price of 70,000, when we go to the closing table, their $50,000 mortgage will get paid off and whatever's left over will be the seller's profit. This is true whether it's a normal purchase or if we're assigning this contract to a cash buyer at the closing table. Where things get tricky is if the amount that we want to offer is less than the mortgage on the property. So to stick with our example, if we had this $50,000 mortgage, but we wanted to offer something like $40,000, in that case, the seller can't actually sell us that property unless they themselves wanna bring $10,000 to the closing table to help pay off their mortgage, and that rarely happens. So this is why I like being able to see on PropStream what the mortgage balance is, because if I'm thinking about making an offer that's less than that mortgage balance, then I have to reshift my thinking and start thinking about a creative financing strategy. The main strategies that I'm learning about right now are seller finance and subject to, and if you guys want me to produce more content on what I'm learning about those, definitely go over to my Instagram at Lily Invest and comment on my latest post to let me know what creative financing strategies you're interested in. So again, let's take a quick look and see if we can find another property that actually does have a mortgage on it. So here's a property, and if we come over to the mortgage and transaction history, what we'll see is they have a mortgage balance of $253,000. Now let's just imagine that we ran our comps and we found out that this property might sell for $500,000 all fixed up. We put it into the wholesaling deal calculator or into you know our wholesaling formula, and we found that we wanted to offer $300,000. Well, great. The $253,000 will get paid off at closing and the seller will profit whatever's left over. But 
if this offer price came out to let's say 200,000, well now we have to consider a creative financing strategy because that offer isn't enough to cover the seller's mortgage. Now number three is to use PropStream to actually find leads, specifically expired listings. This is an often overlooked lead and these are properties that were listed on the MLS with the real estate agent, but failed to sell and are now in the expired category. At this point, the owner is no longer being represented by a real estate agent, so it's perfectly fine if we wanted to skip trace their phone number, give them a call and see if they're still interested in selling. You can also use that first property details page, scroll down and figure out who the listing agent was and call them and then they can communicate with the seller and see if they're still interested. Either one of those is fine, it just depends if you like calling owners directly or if you like building up that rapport with agents and also seeing if they have any other listings that they might be interested in giving you a look at. Either way, I like expired listings because it tells us that the seller was recently motivated to sell and for whatever reason they weren't able to. That could mean the property was outdated, that could mean it was in some form of distress and so they had a hard time finding someone to purchase it. It could also mean that they had an overpriced um, listing price and they thought the property would sell for more than anyone actually offered and the fact that it has now expired might mean that they're a little bit more motivated they've come a little bit more down to earth and are willing to discuss a bit of a lower price with you now if I look at the entire market and let's just go and say we wanted to search in Phoenix Arizona I could come up to the top and hit filter and then I could come to MLS status and click failed now failed or expired are the same thing. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna show me all of the properties in Phoenix, Arizona that have an MLS status of fail. Now, as I imagine, that's 5,700 properties. That's a lot. That's probably far too many for us to wrap our minds around. So what I like to do is when I hit MLS um, search, I like to put that it was at least listed, let's say this, in the last six months. Go back and see any of the sales since May. We wanted a property that was listed since May and has since failed off the MLS. If we were to set that, now we've dropped from almost 6,000 to 900. You can also put more filters, such as you want these properties to have been owned by an individual. Maybe you want the owners that are out of state and you'll see that as you add more filters, they'll show up right here, and you can also see that it's dropping us down. Now we've got a list of 47 properties in Phoenix that have failed off of the MLS recently, and the owner lives out of state. This might be a good list for you to either go through and cold call these homeowners or to call those real estate agents and see if those sellers might still be interested in accepting an offer. Now for number four, stick with me, you've made it through all three, and number four is one that I don't hear a lot of people talking about, and that's using PropStream to find cash buyers in your area, and even more specifically, using it to find the flippers in your area. If you're trying to perform market research to find active investors in your area, or you just wanna to add to your buyers list, this can be a super valuable way to do so. First, let's just imagine that we want to invest in Portland, Oregon, and we wanna figure out where cash purchases are happening. Well, one of the great things about PropStream is they have these filter categories across the top and we can go right ahead and click cash buyers. And that will show us the 23,000 properties that were purchased with cash in Portland. From here, we can get a little bit more specific. If we come to ownership info, we can look at cash buyers. We can set that and say anytime from January of 2020 until now, and we'll see that that has bumped us down to just 1,100 cash buyers. Another thing you can do is you can, instead of looking at the date, you might want to look at a maximum sale price of anyone who bought a property for $100,000 or less with cash. And again, as you add more filters, it will narrow down your list. So it's just up to what filters do you wanna look for for your cash buyers and how big of a list do you want? Now, another thing that you can do, if I come up here to filters and I hit reset, that's gonna erase everything, is I can hit one of these quick list choices and scroll all the way to flippers. Now, what's really cool about this is we're not just looking at cash purchases because you can imagine that in the Portland area, there might be some wealthy people who can just afford to buy their property cash, but they're not actually investors and you might call them up and you know not have a great conversation because they're not trying to buy properties cash, they just decided to buy a property for themselves cash. But this filter with flippers will help you find the actual investors 
investors in your area because it's looking for properties that were purchased cash and resold on the MLS in the last two years. So if you think about the life cycle of one of those properties, it was distressed, an investor purchased it cash, fix it up, update it, and now they've relisted it on the MLS for sale. Those are probably some of the most active investors in your area, and those are the ones that you're probably going to want to get on your cash buyers list. So right now, right off the bat, it's showing that there are 252 properties that were purchased cash in the last two years and then relisted on the MLS. If we wanted to get more specific, we could always come over here and look at property characteristics. If we wanted to look at single families or multifamilies like duplexes and triplexes, we can look at any other filters that we want to add to this list, but we at least already have just by using that one filter at least 250 properties that we know were flipped in Portland and those are great cash buyers that we can now reach out to either just by skip tracing them or by calling the listing agent and seeing if they'll put us in touch with their cash buyer. So for example, if I was interested in this property on 134th Avenue, I could come look at the pictures and see if it's been remodeled, which it absolutely has been and then I can scroll to MLS details, scroll down, and right here, I can call this real estate agent. I have their phone number, their office phone number, as well as email addresses, and I can figure out if this is an active investor in the area and ask them if their investor is looking for more deals. Let me know in the comments below what ways you use PropStream in your business. If you found this video helpful, you should definitely check out this one next. I post daily over on Instagram, at Invest, so be sure to connect with me there while I post here three times a week. Until next time, thank you so much for watching.